They are among the main part of Rwandan traditional history. Generally, there's a link between traditional dance and, and cows. They had to be kept for the king's privilege. These were special breeds of cows selected in the whole of the kingdom and they were only reserved for the king. Today, they are tourist attractions as they are among the main parts of Rwandan cultural tourism. Tourists want to see something that is uh, authentic. They want to see something that really is close to the reality. They are beauty made in Yambo to be the sated cows in order to be kept for the king. Rwanda is a small and beautiful country, known as a country of thousand hills. It's located in East Central Africa. It's surrounded by the Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, Burundi, and Tanzania. Back to ancient time, the time before colonial period, as well as during colonial period, the economics of Rwanda was mainly based on hunting, agriculture, and breeding, especially cattle breeding. Looking back to monarchic period, cows had significant laws in Rwandan culture. In order to look the Inyambo, we need to go back in time and see their origin and value of cows in Rwanda. The opinion puts Jehanga causing any surprising ailments and that he is considered the ancestor of Rwandan dynasty that was the origin of cows. <laughs> Adasami informant suggested that cows come from Dorkwa, which is a former Rwanda. Mutala, or Kalagui, which is neighboring region of Rwanda, and which in Kato at that time. Since the existence of cows in Rwandan culture, they have got a lot of values and significance. Cows are demonstrated as a sign of friendship, as friends give cows to one another. Actually, the cow that have been given by my friend, it is considered like not of a friendship. And that friendship will be even a heritage to our descendants. Back to monarchic period, cows were a sign of richness. The number of cows belonging to someone could determine his social class. Of course, cattle breeding in Rwanda had great impact on Rwandan social economics. As the number of cows someone possessed could justify whether he is rich or poor. In terms of marriage, Cows are demonstrated as dories. This fact has brought some names in Kenya Rwanda, such as Zaninga or Mutunginga, where parents name their girls in such ways to mean that their daughter will bring them cows in terms of glory. And then, a cow is always mentioned in some greetings, such as Jiringa to mean heavy cow, Amashu to mean heavy thousand of them. Cow is also mentioned in some Kenya Rwanda names. For example, Zaninga, a name which means spring cows. Kanyana, 
does also mean calf and gafizi, a name which means small bull. As my name is Jeringa, first of all, I'm very proud of my name because it lies on London culture. So, when trying to define my name, it is like uh, uh, being proud or having pleasure from cows. In Rwandan tradition, there were two main types of cows. Herds of prestige cows called Inyambo and other common breeds cows called Inuku that Umami entrusted to the army. Inuku are small cows which have short horns. Contrary to Inuku, Inyambo are long horned cows. They are tall and big. Their hair smoothness makes them look more beautiful. Since their birth, they had to be trained in terms of movement and discipline. To understand the mystery of Inyambo, we need to get back in time and see their origin. The Committee of Inyambo formed by the Board of Governors of the country in 1958, believed that this kind of cows had appeared in Rwanda during the period of King Chirma Rugwe. According to Sandrat in 1939, he said, Inyambo are native of Bunyoro, western region of Uganda, where they were raised by Bakama, kings of that country. They drank their milk until the day Tubakama died from drinking that milk. After that incident, Devanyoro chased Inyambo to Nkore. Devagabi, kings of Nkore, in turn drank the milk of Inyambo and also died. The cattle were replaced to Karagui, northwest region of Tanzania operated by Banyambo. The king of this country, already informed more about Inyambo, refused them hospitality. But Banyambo accompanied them to the borders of Rwanda. Mami of Rwanda welcomed Inyambo Kato, but void never to drink their milk. Mami, when Inyambo cows have become numerous, Ngami Uimazimaka launched an edict prohibiting the Tutsi to be in possession of herds of this breed, that it was the exclusive privilege of the courts to possess. That is when Inyambo might probably become the king's privilege in Rwanda. How was the process of Inyambo Kato in breeding? In his book called Amazina Yinga, Alexi Kagame, one of the greatest writers in Rwanda, inferred from former observations that Inyambo had to be longer reproduced by inbreeding. As the way to avoid them doomed to the generation and loss of time, they needed the supply of new blood of ordinary cattle. Therefore, the royal Inyambo was not obtained until the fourth generation. Here is the demonstration of their crossbreeding. The first generation. The ordinary cow crossed with Inyambo bull reproduced the cow called Ibigarama. The second generation. Ibigarama cows crossed with Inyambo bull reproduced cows called Imirizo. 
The third generation, Ibigarama cows crossed with Inyambo Boro, they produce cows called Inyere Chibumbira. The fourth generation, Imirizo cows crossed with Inyambo Boro, they produce Inyambo Zinjejeni, that's to say Inyambo in their fullness. The first generation would be these types of cows termed as Inyambo and they were only reserved for the king. That's why they were always termed as Inyambo, not like in Huku or in uh, other cows, but they were termed as Inyambo. Official Inyambo cows herds were divided into two groups, chestnuts and brown. Nowadays, Rihoga and Magaju, in other words, chestnut and brown, are used to determine the cow's color. But during the monarchic period, it was not like that. Therefore, we should know that these colors determine their origin. The group of chestnuts, or amagaju, was originally formed by cows from the country Muhima, southern west Uganda. That means outside of Rwanda. But the group of Blan, or Ibihogo, consisted of Rwandan Inyambo, farming before 1750. In Rwanda, all cows were divided among several bovine hosts, and all Rwandan mares, even little boys, were divided into different social army as well. Every social army had a name of its own and had to respond to its bovine army. It's amazing to hear how Inyambo had to fight as if they were human beings. Most of the books which talk about cattle breeding in Rwanda demonstrate the fight of Nyambo. That fight it was not real. It was simply the comparison between Vihogo and Amagas. The comparison has to be done through one and popular literature of that period called Amazina Inga. This Amazina Inga, I like poetry. A poet or Umisi could compare two cows just focusing on their beauty. Then the win of that, that fight could be the one which looks more beautiful. Hari nyambo wakabuga wati nharu unaka, nharu unaka wakari hamagari kazi kahagarara. Wakari wakari kari ya wakari vugu mwakatu, wakari wakari vuga kajamu, kaneza kari vuga kagaru, kaneza mitu wa hiru na mkungu wa tere na hata bumbu litaka. Kamano kani zaka jira hanko jira kagaru kani kako nike naka shana na yamba ye yangha imumbi imumbi zita jare jari kiru. It had to be quite fight. That was forbidden to make fight between Yogo and Yogo or between Amagaja and Amagaja. Contrary to other cattles, Inyambo had to be kept well. In the classical age, the royal state directly managed Inyambo in the care of military leaders. In his book called Le Globe et la Société Rwandaise, a voice of historic the 12th siècle, in 1958, Jean Pomsen Hulikimfura demonstrates Inyambo management organization. The upper class of this hierarchy was formed by the king and the head of the social army, Mutwari Nkabu, who was the general superintendent of the bovine army. The middle class was composed by the head of the cows and the chief of Inyambo, Mutwari Winga and Mutwari Winyambo, and the senior keeper of the flock, Mutahira. The categories of cattle keepers were composed by all auxiliaries of chief keeper of the flock, namely Mugiriza Abafatangoni and Abarenza Masi. Mugiriza 
gave Adakatoki Pass very specific and detailed information on pasture, watering, and brief care of the cattle. Abafatangoni read Inyambo to pasture, watered them, and they brought them back to the cow shed at nightfall. Abarin Zamasi took care of everything inside the cow shed. They cleaned the cow shed, cut the grass for bedding, and seeking grass and water for the maintenance of young calves. When the king conducting visit to places where Inyambo grazed, he had to be presented them and explained more on the possession of raising them. As Inyambo had great praise in official ceremonies of Rwanda, in such occasions they had to be prepared. Looking into the traditional history of cow in Rwanda, there were special ceremonies of naming Inyambo done by the intellectual persons of that time called IBC. These ceremonies were only reserved for Inyambo because Inoku could simply get ordinary pastoral poetry known as Amahamba. Dance has a great law in the culture of Rwanda. No one can deny the popularity of running traditional dance all over the world. However, behind dancing, there is an act of imitating the Inyambo. The link between uh, the traditional dance and uh, Inyambo is that when we dance, we imitate the horns of the cow with the arms, especially in the Mushaya. Knowing Nyambo that he was a selected cow, it just gives me that feeling of having something special when I dance imitating the holes of the cow or imitating the grace in working of the cows or stuff like that. Basically, this type of dance called Mushaya focus more on imitating Nyambo horns' dispositions by using dancers arms not only arms, but also their movements imitate Inyambo. When you look to a cow, the way it works, the way they sit, does, does this thing, I don't know if I can say a grace or something, but there's that beautiful thing about cow. There's this grace when they work slowly and elegantly. Commonly, that's, where, that, that's why we have to imitate all of it. Rwandan economics is growing fast. Tourism is a fast-growing sector. It's now the country's leading foreign exchange earner. Uh, tourism uh, is key, is at the center of Rwanda's uh, economic growth. It's actually uh, the number one foreign exchange earner. Uh, so in that sense, it's, it's really huge as far as foreign exchange coming to the country is concerned, as well as export, uh, so tourism is an export. Uh, but it's also big in terms of uh, investments that are coming into the country. Uh, if I take the example of last year, we had uh, more than $300 million 
uh, worth of investment in the tourism sector alone uh, on, uh, out of the total of 1.1 billion, so about a third. So it's a very uh, key sector also in, com in terms of investment. And uh, lastly, and not less important, is also the creation of employment. Today, Inyambo are no longer cows, which may easily be found in the wilderness farms. Apart from going to the museum in Nyanza and see the, that uh, type of cows, otherwise you, you won't know what Inyambo is. They've made the part of cultural tourism. They are attracting a big number of tourists. And they may even be among the facts which make tourism go fast. This is the King's Palace Museum. It's located in southern province, Nyanza district. It's the only place where Rwandan prestige cows are found. Uh, the museums decided to bring Inyambo as uh, it was also a uh, part of the history of the Rwandans, most especially uh, during kingship period of Manaki rule. So because they had different laws, they prayed during kingship. That's why the museum decided to bring them as a symbol of presenting and further showing people their history. They hold real symbolic meaning as they awake past and present. They are tourists' wishes. Furthermore, Inyambo facilitates tourists to get back in time and know more about traditions of Rwanda. The production of Inyambo gives an opportunity for people to see something different, to see something uh, and, and another value, it adds another value to, to the museum. And also, it generally, it, it makes the experience even more real uh, because it's, uh, it's important that tourists want to see something that is uh, authentic. They want to see something that really is close to the reality. And we know that uh, Inyambo was uh, very much a part of, of uh, Rwanda's uh, uh, history of you know kingdom. So for them to see that, it makes them really go back to that time and be able to to see and feel the way it really was. So it's always a, 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 something that is good because uh, uh, people see that you know they, they are getting the whole story and they stay longer. Since the launch of Inyambo at Museum, the Nyanza Museum has got an obvious change and progress. The Inyambo project itself has done a lot of things here and uh, they are incredible as I may say. They are seen by everybody. Like before the Inyambos were introduced here in uh, the museum, at the King's Paris Museum, I may say we had some figures of visitors or statistics uh, just beginning with uh, thousands, but now we are having more than thousands. And this is demonstrated by the number of money the museum is earning today. Like average on a month, we use it to have one million or like 500,000. But these days a month, we are receiving almost 4 million. And when you go year by year, like in 2010, that's when they were introduced in, uh, in uh, December. And uh, from December, we started earning 4 million. And uh, at the end of the year, we found ourselves earning 17 million and above. Then in 2011, we saw uh, an incredible increment of 29 million. That's a great impact. Then afterwards, in 2012, we saw the museum earning 37 million and above in a year. So it is uh, for sure a thin thing that the one can say that the Inyambo project has done to the museum. The history of Rwanda is made of various things, but the incredible history of Inyambo is among the best part of Rwandan cultural heritage. Actually, it's amazing to hear more about their origin in Rwanda and how important they were during the monarchic period. This is the way to give back in some part of Rwandan history as well as culture. The young people, the children, or you know, and other people need to understand the, the, the story, the history of Rwanda, the culture of Rwanda, and I think uh, tourism is, is one element that will make them appreciate that. Having the ability to learn and to know about the Paris, it's beautiful, it's amazing. You just feel like you're in your own world.
Despite few years since Inyambo have been exhibited at Inyanza, there are positive reactions from their visitors. The visitors on our website, the visitors on the visitors' books, and uh, shown from their impressions and suggestions, they are always saying that the Inyambo project is actually one of the best things the museum has introduced uh, in the recent years. Others are even coming back saying that uh, last time we didn't see the Inyambo, we are lucky that we are still alive to, to see them uh, being sung for, uh, taking pictures with them, their incredible horns, which is so uh, nice to see them.